Now this problem right here is a little bit tricky. What we've got uh, is a changing interest period and a uh, P slash A factor. And so what we're going to do here is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through, it's a relatively quick problem, but it can be very difficult to understand uh, if you get confused at first. So I'm going to go through this and I suggest kind of rewinding and, and going back and, and watching it again uh, to, to make sure you understand the problem because this is a, a pretty good one and a pretty common problem. Right? In this problem, we have Holly who uh, has a retirement account with a balance of $62,000 in it. And that account continues to earn 4% APR. What she plans to do is withdraw equal amounts at the end of each year following, uh, for the following 10 years, exhausting the account. And the question she has is how much can she withdraw each year? But what's happening in her account is it, it's at 4% uh, for the first uh, four years and then after four year in, after four years in year four the APR is going to switch to two percent and she wants to know well if I want to make regular investments a over the course you know over all ten years uh, what is that going to what is that value a uh, going to be okay so let's write what we're given uh, we have a P which is our initial what we're going to call investment okay that's the initial amount in her account of sixty two thousand dollars. We have an I, uh, let's call this I1 instead of just I, because they, it, this changes. I1 is 4% APR, and I2 here is going to be 2% APR. All right, and let's draw the cash flow diagram here. This one's a little bit cumbersome, but let's draw it anyhow. Um, we have a 10 year period. We have this initial amount, P that is sunk into the account and then we've got regular investments two, three, four, five uh, and then we have another series of investments one, two, three, four, and five and I shouldn't call these investments these are actually withdrawals alright and let me just redraw that line remember here we want A to be constant the entire period. She wants to receive the same amount of money for the whole 10 year period. And this is starts at zero and goes to 10. And remember, in uh, year number four, so one, two, three, four, we have one interest, we have one interest of 4%, and then here we're gonna have an interest of 2%. And the point of view is Holly, and she's gonna be the, let's call her the with drawer. Uh, okay, um, and we have that. So we have that variable interest rate, and we have an N one is equal to four years, and an N two which is equal to uh, six years. Now, what we obviously have to do is break this problem up into two pieces. Okay, and by breaking this problem up into two pieces, we can solve appropriately. Now, what we're going to need to do is find the sum of money that accumulates after year four and convert that back to present dollars, okay? Now that present amount, remember, is $62,000. What we need to do is convert that back to present dollars. Then what we have to do is take the amount, the series that occurs between year four and year 10, that six year period, convert that back, okay, to a present value as well. So let's try that. We have P is equal to A, this is our initial series of payments, uh, and A is unknown, right? We're gonna use the factor and we're gonna convert that back to present value, P slash A to the 4% and we have invested that for four years, okay? We are going to add that amount to A, again, the series that's occurring over the next six years, multiplied by the P slash A factor, 4% and six years. All right, what we've effectively done is we've taken the investments that occur over the for over the uh, next six years and converting them to value uh, that happens at year four. Okay, so I'm going to draw this really quickly for you. Uh, we're taking one, two, three, four, five, six investments and converting them back to a present value in year four. So if we label this, this is A, this is year ten. We're converting this back to some value here in year four. What we then need to do is take that value that occurs in year four, okay? We're gonna essentially 
uh, reinvest that, if that makes sense. Okay, here, some value that we that we find. All right, this is going to be equal, and we need to convert that back to present value. So this future value needs to be converted back from year four to year zero to a present. All right, so what we need to do here is we need to multiply that by the p slash f factor, four percent, and four. As I indicated here, we need to convert this back four years. Okay, so let's let's put this all in here really quickly. We have sixty-two thousand is equal to a, and we're going to multiply that by the p slash a factor, four percent in four years. Let's go to the four percent table. Look at four years. We need the p slash a in four years. Okay, that gives us three point three point six three zero. Three point six three zero. We're going to add that to a. Remember, a is still our unknown. P slash a, four percent and six. You'll notice I have a bit of an error here. Uh, I didn't account for that uh, second interest rate. Uh, this is two percent. Okay, so there was an error. So if you caught that, kudos. Uh, we have we have two percent here. Now that two percent is occurring over this period right here. But let's look at what's happening from year four to year zero. That period year four and years to year zero is still at four percent. So we still need to treat that as four percent. Okay, so you can't change this. This right here should be two percent, but this here should be four percent because over that period you you would be gaining four percent interest. All right, so let's go to the two percent table and look up six years the p slash a factor. So we're going to go up to the two percent. We're looking for the p slash a factor in six years and that shows as 5.601 All right, and we're finally gonna say p slash f four percent in four years so we're gonna go back to the four percent table four years p slash f is 0 0.8548 0 0.8548 and when we solve for a uh, a gives us $7,365.40. If we think about that, uh, it makes sense. That means we can withdraw, it means Holly can withdraw $7,365.40 uh, every year for the next 10 years, um, and then she'll exhaust her account. So we're in the ballpark. We know that's, that's right.